Before improvements in transportation, factories were built in areas where iron and coal mines were close at hand. These areas were mines, factories and workers crowded together, developed into industrial cities, and they almost immediately became difficult places in which to live. Here the water and air became terribly polluted, as dark clouds of smoke poured from factory chimneys, from ovens where coal was converted into coke, and from the fireplaces in the simple homes of thousands of miners and factory workers. Everything was covered with a dark layer of soot. Industrial waste and sewage fouled the rivers and streams. And the land that only recently had been green and fertile was torn up as more and more mines and factories appeared and new rows of workers' houses sprouted up in the nearby fields. These industrial towns were dreary, overcrowded, and unhealthy places to raise a family. But eventually, changes started to be made to benefit the workers. A handful of enlightened industrialists created a few model villages for workers, and these were a great improvement over how they had lived before. Later 19th century, many other social improvements followed. Laws banning labor unions were repealed, and child labor was out law. Although there were plenty of economic bad times, the working classes had reached a point where they sometimes had extra money to spend. In fact, they now made up a vast new market for the manufactured goods they helped produce. Wealth, it seemed, created more wealth. Free public schools were instituted all across England for the very first time, resulting in the first working class generation that was able to read and write. These new educational skills provided some young people with a ticket away from a dreary future in the mines and factories to better paying, less monotonous jobs. 